as for imaginary numbers, complex numbers. Take a look at this. What's the square root of four, right? Hopefully you can see this well enough. These pens are a little bit uh, sharper, right? How do you take the square root of four? Well, when you want to take the square root of anything, it's called prime factorization. What we talked about in the first part here, right? A couple of days ago. You break this thing into things multiply it together to give it the top number, right? And square root means find two things that are identical to give you the uh, that multiply each other, right? Slick mix two, right? So square root means a pair inside the square root symbol can come out as a single, right? So this comes out as a two, so the answer to this is two. Now you have to think uh, a little bit and decide if that's the only answer you have, right? Because what you're trying to do here with this number is break it down into numbers multiply to give you that number, right? So here's another option for the square root of four. Can you think of two other numbers that multiply together to give you four that are identical? So two other identical numbers that multiply together to give you four. We have two times two gives us four. Right? What are two other numbers that multiply together to give you four? Put equally right as four to the power of a half, I think. Yeah, indeed, because the radical, as we talked about, right? That's a power. A radical is this number just goes in the denominator and the power, right? So if we write down three to the power of two over, I don't know, let's go three. Instead of going three, let's go 90. What do we want? I want a number that's actually, those. let's go 30. 30 to the power of two over three. You could write, rewrite that as cube root of 30 squared okay that's what it really means chicho i need to chill here for a bit i just sent you a emotionally charged rap via dm and i kind of got out of control with my energy you need to calm down uh, time to learn some math time to learn some math thing mother and uh, i'll uh, depending on how big of a rat that is i might skim through it i might read the whole thing <laughs> right what square root two um by square root two give root four or would that give root two would say that again would square root two i recorded it just one verse ah one verse okay awesome uh they were so slick mix says would square root two by square root two give root four or would it would that give two it would be both right so square root of two times the square root of two is equal to the square root of four which is equal to now it's not just two square root of four is not just two because as i asked what are two other identical numbers that multiply together to give you four well negative two times negative two okay negative two times negative two is four so you could write this as negative two negative two times negative two well two identical things that's what the root symbol means this many identical things can come out as a single thing right so this would be negative two so square root of four is really positive two and negative two there are two answers to this right should we do a quick review of uh, radicals roots let's do a quick little review of roots okay before we go before we go any further how's this stuff I'm using new markers I'm not sure if I really like these markers they're hard to come off we might revert back to the other markers let's check it out oh yeah these are really hard to come out okay this isn't this is a dry erase. This is a difficult dry erase. Uh, Chisho, you should look into the uh, proof of numerology with regard to 369. <laughs> yeah, I've seen it in the past before, brother. For instance, that, yeah, yeah, I've seen it before in the past. It's cool stuff. There's a lot of patterns in uh, I rarely use.
use any of these. I don't think there's anything left in this one. I think I got a little one here. Do I? Let's check it out. Do we have a little one here? Oh, we do have a little guy here. It's rare I use these. I only got these things because sometimes you buy these things in packs and they come with it, right? And it's cheaper buying it with this stock than buying those things solo, right? The marker solo. Oh, look at this nastiness. Yeah. Let's bring out a napkin. We're going to do this with a napkin. Thing of the rap has elevated your brain and your thinking for 45 sets of me. <laughs> Let's talk about radicals. Okay. Let's talk about radicals. Yeah, definitely don't like these pens. Also, four plus five is nine. <laughs> oh, fun. Fun. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Let's see which color is going to come out better. Let's talk about roots. Now think of radicals as this, right? Radicals are basically any number in the in the denominator and the exponent is a radical, right? So if I write down 27 to the power of 1 over 3, okay, then think of this as this 3 goes in the radical. So this is really the cube root of 27. Well, what's the cube root of 27? cube root of 27 you break down 27 right and thank you for the follows gang apologies if i'm not catching uh <laughs> those pens are proof they are i need a new batch i gotta go get another batch so break down 27 again the mul things multiply together to give you 27 right so 27 becomes three times nine three times three right so 27 is really three times three times three now this number for the radical up here if there is no number it means square root it means two right so there when there is no number it means two when they put a number it means whatever the number is and what that number means is if you find this many this many of the same number inside it can come back as one thing right so this thing says three things can come out as one thing so three threes come out as a three right and there's nothing left in there so the answer is three so the cube root of 27 or 27 to the power of one third is three let's do a more complicated one let's go 32 to the power of two over five right well 32 to the power of two over five says this take the fifth root of 32 and then square it that's what it means and usually you do the denominator first you take the radical first because it makes the number smaller so the smaller num the number the easier you can deal with it right so fifth root of 32 well 32 is 4 times 8 4 is 2 times 2 8 is 2 times 2 times 2 well if you're looking for five of a kind because that's what the fifth root says if you're looking for five of a kind here's five twos right five twos merge into one two five of a kind becomes one so this is two squared which is equal to four okay let's do one where it doesn't work out to an integer right what if you had let's do let's do this let's go 32 to the power of one third right so again 32 but this time we're looking for three of a kind so this goes in here becomes the cube root of 32 and 32 we already know is five twos right one two three four five two 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 there's five twos well cube root means three of a kind three of a kind 
can come out as one thing. So three twos come out as a single two, right? And then what do you have left on the inside? You got two times two. Can you bring those out? No. The cube root says you, they need to be three of a kind for them to be able to come out as a single thing. So whatever that can't come out is still in there. So two times two is four. So this the 32 to the power of one third is two and the cube root of four. Okay. Does that make sense? I hope so. That's basically radicals, right? Now let's look at how the imaginary number comes into play here. Okay. Easier to take off, eh? Yeah, much easier to remove. Now, take a look at this though. So what if we had, what if we had, as before, square root of four? Square root of four, or four to a power of one half. Let's lay it all out from the beginning, right? Just link everything up. So what if you have four to the power of a half? This means the square root of four, because the two comes in the radical. But if it's a two, you don't need to write it. By definition, the square root just means two, right? So two numbers that multiply to give you four are two times two, or negative two times negative two, right? Two times two is four, negative two times negative two is four. So we have two possible answers, plus or minus two. Okay. Now what if you had this? Negative four to the power of a half. Okay. So the whole thing to the power of a half. Keep this in mind that negative four to a power of a half, because this negative sign is not being taken to a power of a half, the way you write this is negative square root of four, which is gonna be negative plus and minus two, which is really gonna be minus plus two, which is the same thing in plus and minus two, it doesn't make a difference, right? So the negative sign in front here really doesn't change the game at all. Because plus or minus two is the same thing as negative minus two. So you never really write down negative minus two, so you write down plus and minus two, okay? What about this guy? This guy says this. What's the square root of negative four? What's the square root of negative four? So what are two numbers that multiply to give you negative four? You can have two times negative two chicho my mood on a scale of 10 is always five plus and minus five <laughs> hopefully you hit the range in between a little bit too so it means you're either uh zero to ten no no plus or minus five would be you hit everything in the middle so zero to ten which is great right you're not only you're part of the uh, I guess integers will work as well, but the real number set and everything in between. So two numbers that give you negative four are going to be two times negative two, but that doesn't help us out because the square root says if two things are the same, you can bring them out, right? That doesn't work. Or negative two times two, right? Which is the same thing as two times negative two. So that doesn't work out. We can't bring it out. So instead of two numbers multiplying to give you four or negative four, what do we look at three numbers that multiply to give you negative four? What are three numbers that could multiply to give you negative four? Hmm. Well, you could have two times negative two times negative one. Well, that gives you positive. That still doesn't work. We need it to be negative. So how about negative, right? So you can have negative two times negative two is positive four times negative one is negative four. Cool. Well, square root function is just defined to be the positive square root, mainly because it's nicer and lets it be a function. It's only system. 
uh, system veil, they only say positive uh, up to a certain grade. After a certain grade, you have to look at it as plus and minus. You have to look at both options, right? There, I wish they taught that earlier, right? They always say, oh, it's, it, we define it as being the positive, but it's only a positive in certain systems where the negative is not allowed. In other systems, if the negative is allowed, it could be negative. So what I tell my students is I start teaching them this in grade 9 and grade 10 because in grade 11, you have to look at the positive and negative. All right. Why do you have to look at the positive and negative here? Let me write this down. Ooh, what a beautiful equation this is or formula. X is equal to negative B plus and minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC over 2a can you appreciate why it has to be positive and negative now because when you're solving and this is the quadratic formula right the quadratic formula allows you to solve for x when given a quadratic equation right so the plus and minus comes into play because if you have a quadratic formula which is really a parabola right something like this this x value is really giving you the x intercepts it's giving you this point and this point and the way you get both those points is because you have plus and minus the in this quadratic formula and the plus and minus plays like this this is the axis of symmetry for a quadratic equation right negative b over 2a is your axis of symmetry and plus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a is this distance here and minus is this distance here it gives you both directions right important the plus and minus where are we the plus and minus is important they just don't tell people how important it is until later on which is unfortunate right they should be teaching this in grade eight and nine and people should know it well in grade 10 okay the plus uh, plus minus appears in the quadratic formula because you took a square root for sure if you didn't take a square root to be only positive the quadratic formula would be wrong to be only but by definition if you take the square root you need the plus and minus the plus and minus doesn't just come into play in the quadratic formula it's part of what happens it's like is the reality of the situation when you take the even root of any number you're always going to get a plus and minus it's there you can negate the minus you can eliminate the minus if you want right really you can eliminate it or dismiss it or say it doesn't apply in your system but you have to appreciate that it's there and by applying the language of mathematics because this is just straight up syntax that's what it means right but by applying the mathematics in the real world you can decide to accept the negative or not accept the negative let me try to reword this reword it yeah 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 yeah. that'd be cool system veil plus and minus appears let me read the what you wrote before as well again the plus and minus appears in the quadratic formula because you took a square root yeah if you didn't take square to be only positive the quadratic formula would be wrong if you didn't take the square root the square if you didn't take the square or square root that's the square root if you didn't take square root to be only positive yeah if you if you only took the square root to be positive then the quadratic formula would be wrong because you wouldn't get this other half of the quadratic function you would only get that half right let's see what the rewording is before we move on i like math tangents they're cool or let me finish this off and then we'll deal with that right while the rewording comes in now take a look at this thing Here's three numbers that multiply to give you negative four. Here's three more numbers that can multiply to give you negative four. Instead of having a negative two here, get rid of the negative two and go times negative one. 
So negative 2 times negative 2 is 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. So this works out. 2 times 2 is 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. So this works out as well. Well, the square root symbol says, hey, if you have two things that are identical, you can bring them out as a single. So here is two negative twos. They can come out as a negative two. Here's two positive twos. They can come out as a two. So again, we have plus and minus two, plus and minus two. However, in both situations, we have a negative one still in the square root symbol. So square root of negative one. Now there aren't two numbers that multiply to give you a negative number. Negative times a negative is positive. So this is a special number that appears. And our definition, it is a definition that we've come up with. We say, you know what? Let's simplify this instead of, because this appears in a lot of places. It comes up a lot, right? Square root of negative one. Electrodynamics, uh, electrodynamics, um, electromagnetics, magnetic methods, water, electricity, you get the square root of negative one in play in the real world. Okay, when you do the mathematics, so, and when you do quadratics, you get the imaginary numbers coming up and stuff, right? So what we did, because this appears a lot, just like the number pi, right? This is pi. Everyone knows what this is. This is 3.1415 dot, 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 right? We don't have to write it down by decimal places. We just come up with a symbol to represent pi. Well, we just come up with a symbol to represent the square root of negative one. We call it i. So by definition, i is equal to square root of negative one. So to simplify what we wrote, we can write it as plus and minus i, right? Plus and minus, plus and minus two i, right? So all we do, we just replace the square root of negative one by i, okay? And in mathematics, whenever you see i with a number or just i by itself, we define it to be the square root of negative one. Okay, that's all. And then there's different ways you can look at this. You can look at it as a the third dimensional plane as graphing in and whatnot. Um, unfortunately, I used to know how to apply this. We did apply it. We graphed it and stuff like this. And it definitely comes into play in electro electromagnetics and stuff um, because we graph. We actually uh, provide graphs of the the complex number readings that we're taking because they provide a certain type of information uh, give us more information about anomalies that we're looking at but i haven't been teaching it uh, for like 20 years now uh, they took it out of the curriculum so i'm you know and i haven't done geophysics for like 20 years so i'm not going to apply this okay i hope that's clear regarding i that's all i is i is the square root of negative